I found Fish and Game out here to be great people, but they've got this kind of long-standing reputation uh, from going back in the 60s and 70s when they were first coming out and chasing some of these little Montana rattlesnakes and stuff. And you would hear about, oh, the guys from California are out here raping and plundering our snakes, and they're, they're bringing their hydraulic jacks and pry bars, and they've destroyed the mountains. And it's like, oh, come on. You know, I'm sure that a few places have been hit hard, and Fish and Game really jumped on those people. And uh, I've met some, I have friends out here to this day are like terrified of Fish and Game. And I mean, I come from in Florida where we used to cooperate with Fish and Game all the time. And they were, they were happy to deal with us and listen to us and understand what we needed. And I, th I find the people out here to be very much like that. But a lot of the older herpers seem to be like, oh, like, oh they're, they're, they'll just tell, tell you what you want to hear. And but watch out, they're going to try to bust yeah. you now. And, I think there was probably that mentality, that, that, that cop mentality, more prevalent back in the 70s and stuff. But uh, the guys I see now seem like intelligent, interesting people, and they seem willing to work with us, and they want to know, learn about what we're learning about. Because, I mean, obviously all, these, all of us herpers are getting out in these little nooks and crannies of the state that they don't have time to go look in. And or resources for, unfortunately. Yeah, we, yeah. we actually had the opportunity to interact with Fish and Game uh, just this past fall. Uh, when, what is it, every four or five years or something like that, they have a, a group that suggests changes that okay. are needed for the laws. And then uh, they take all these changes and then they kind of decide which of them they're going to implement or not. And some of the changes would have not been good for, for herpers at all. And so a group of herpers got together ahead of time before the big public meeting in December. They got together in November and uh, we were among the ones that got to meet with Fish and Game. There were about a dozen of us, I think. And we met at the local Fish and Game office and brought up all of our concerns about why this wouldn't be good or that wouldn't be good and could you change it to this. And I was pretty amazed at, at how cooperative they were. They didn't give us 100% of what we wanted, but they gave us probably 90% of what we wanted. It was great that they were willing to listen to us. And, and, and make suggestions and, and accept our suggestions and, and realize the problems and things that we were facing. I found these people to be great. Uh, and, and, and the thing is, we went to the general public meeting later and they followed through on everything they said. It wasn't like they were just trying to keep us happy or anything. They followed through and, and, and compromised on things. And uh, I, I, I look forward to working with them. Yeah, more. you can't ask for more from officials oh, than that, yeah, really. Right. To be so on what people had said, I was afraid we'd go to the public meeting in December and find out they just told us what we wanted right. to hear and then nothing would be changed. But they did. They said, this has changed, this has changed. And uh, so all of us who had come to that meeting ready to fight if we had to, basically had to go up and say, well, Fish and Game did what we asked them to, what they said they would, and we're really happy. And the commissioners who were there said, boy, you must be a bunch of paid shills. <laughs> <laughs> they invited each one of us up to say something, and it was like, a lot of us, you know, if it had been three months before, we would have been ready to get up there. Well, right. Well, like, you know, but it was like, well, you guys have been cooperating really well with us. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, it's a pleasure doing business with you. So uh, I, I have nothing but good vibes from Arizona well, Fishing Game. I was game. pretty looking, impressed. looking forward to them. And uh, now, now, now that we've become official residents, uh, we'll be, you know, buying the local hunting licenses and fishing licenses and stuff like that. And, and supporting and, uh, and, 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 you know, when, when I pick up roadkill animals, I send them to the museums in Tucson or Phoenix. And, you know, I want to cooperate with them the same as I always did in Florida for almost 40 years. The one thing I wish they would do is uh, you, can't, you can't breed native animals, even common ones, even a gopher. Snake. Really? You huh. can't, I mean, no, I'm, you can breed them. You can give away the babies, but you couldn't breed them and sell them. There's no commercial value. Even, right. even if they were albinos or something, you hmm. can't do that. And uh, it's kind of a shame, especially on common animals. I, I think in California they have a, a captive breeding thing where you can get a license and you can breed the more common ones and things like that. I wish they would do that here. And, of course, in Florida it wasn't a problem, or I couldn't have done corn snakes all those <laughs> right. years. I think they still haven't been exposed to as many keepers and breeders and realized the potential of captive breeding. And uh, I think they still look at it like, well, we need somebody to go over there and inspect the facilities and enforce all this. And, and I, I guess they don't see things from... I've been in the business so long. I mean, it's, it's things that seem obvious to me, they don't even believe it, period, yet, you know. So... Uh, the idea that 
virtually no one would be out here looking for some of these little montane rattlesnakes and these <laughs> mountain king snakes and things like that if they if they would just let the people who live here where the climate is best for breeding those animals supply some to the public but well did you think that would open up a, a unique opportunity though in in relationships with these officials what about the whole theory behind the invisible arc you know where there are breeders who are, are now breeding things that don't have commercial value but are actually giving them away to other breeders who will be familiar with them I mean, is that something that you might look yeah, forward to? Yeah, that's what they do here. I guess, yeah. I, guess, I guess we should buy a bunch of copies of that. And you should. It's a good, it, it's, it's, yeah. That was a very, very well-written piece of uh, literature. Um, and, you know, part of it is, um, at this point, you know, we're, we're both, like, you know, in our early 60s here. Or I'm, I'm, Which I don't I'm, believe. I'm not quite. <laughs> uh, I'm actually 59. Right? I'll be 63 okay. in a month or two. Wow, crazy. So, uh, <laughs> but, but, so, so I'm past the stage where I kind of want to get out there and rah, 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 let's change this law, and I want to breathe this. And, and I still, I feel for the people that want to do it. I want to support those folks, and uh, I'd like to see all that happen. But it's hard to be quite as enthusiastic about it because I'm not going to be setting up hundreds of California kings or Sonoran gopher snakes or green rat snakes or pyromanas. Sure. At this point in my life, you know, I've, I've done a lot of that. I, I, I tip my hat to the people that are still doing it. And we but, fought all that stuff in Florida and tried to get it, you know, the way we wanted it, put a lot of time and effort into it. I don't know if we want to redo all that again. It's a huge undertaking, yeah. It is. I'm, I'm happy just enjoying some of these animals, keeping a few around. If a few of them breed, that would be great, but I, I, I'm actually, I guess I'm leaning towards a lot of the herpers out here. I, I was going to say, are you making that transition, Bill, yeah, into exactly. the field? Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. And a lot of it is it's an age-related thing. I mean, when you're young, you want to own everything. You want to catch yes. it and possess it and fondle it and... and uh, I've been there, done that, uh, so I can enjoy this scene. I, you, you see me. I mean, the photos are what I'm into now. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, hunting with a camera is the way to go. Um, there, I mean, even out here, you've got some real purist people that will only take a picture of the animal in situ uh, without disturbing. No manipulation. It. Yeah. I don't quite go that far. Uh, although I think it's great when you see those pictures. A lot of times, there's their heads in a hole or there's grass in the way and. But it's it's nice, but uh, I still don't mind messing with the animals and posing them, and and actually the fish and game people clarified on that during this meeting, that they they made it clear that like minor manipulation of these animals is not anything they're worried about, and really on the side they kind of said we don't even really worry about it with the protected stuff, but we have to stay official because you can't just have everybody thinking okay there's a heel monster grab it you know right right but uh they have no they have no problem with this like I said I think they've got a more enlightened younger crowd of people in there now a lot of college educated people and biologists so uh, mm. like I said I, I thought they were great people um, as far as the Herper community goes here in Arizona, would you say it's a tight knit community? Like much what you have? Because I mean, I, I hate to make the comparisons to Florida because Florida is like the mecca, obviously. And that's um, what we know. Yeah. So we compare everything to Florida. Right, right. Yeah, it does seem a little more fragmented out here. We, people with, with diverse interests, like the field people, and people that people have, like there's people that are just into rattlesnakes, mm. and people that a are lot of them. just just into king snakes, and uh, there's a lot of lizard keepers out here, and uh. And again, the people that just want to go and see them in the wild or photograph them in the wild and keep their places hidden, and they worry about every time somebody comes out here. Uh, I know when we were first here, some people were thinking, oh my gosh, Bill loves here. He was a reptile dealer. He's going to have all his friends out here raping and plundering, you know, the, the resources and all this. And I, hopefully these people have come to see the light, but that's not, that's not the case. I do have a lot of visitors and friends come out, and I'd love to take them out. As you should, it's stuff. gorgeous out it's here. There's so much to here, show you know. off and, and see. And, and, and it's very seldom that any of my friends ever take anything back with them, you right. know? Um, Most and of them are do, going on a plane, and, and they don't they, take And anything. if they say they are, I said, that's cool, and I, I ask to see their hunting license and all this, and if they want to take a gopher snake or, or something that's not protected, hey, you know. 